there was a really shit. bad joke I did in the last one, and you're like, no. I'm like, I'll cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> did you? You cut it out? Yeah. I'm sorry. Sometimes I say no, but I mean for you to keep it in. <laughs> no, it was really bad. Are you ready? Want me to do it, or do you want to do it? You do it. You do it. Hey, welcome to Snackdown. I'm Justin, and this is... Andy. And today... We are doing elderflower liqueur, I'm which very... is other also known as Saint Germain. The branded one is Saint Germain. Yep. Yeah. So, I'm... are there other ones? I was trying I'm to look sure it up. That... That... I mean, I'm sure the there main... are. That's the. So this was um... Germain one. <laughs> yeah, oh, the man. most popular one. Can't believe we got that while I was recording. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that. Cut that. <laughs> so we got this idea from a listener. Uh, some of you know him as Barista Ryan. Some of you know him as Doodle Dad Ryan because he has some doodle dogs. But yeah, he's a listener and he made a St. Germain cocktail and he said he wanted to see us drink it. So we're going to try it. Andy had already tried it and said he liked St. Germain. I've never had it at all. Uh, yeah. So we've. Um, it wasn't like my first pick in terms of buying liqueurs, but, you know, we got it I and mean, we're all about herbaceous summers so uh it's a good you know when you look up a saint germain drink it's typically going to be a summer forward drink yeah they were all very herbaceous so it reminded me of our last summer of herbaceous cocktails such a good summer yeah. this is going to be a smoking <laughs> summer that's for sure yeah yeah so what do you know about elderflower in general you're the plant and entomology guy well first of all um elderflower has nothing to do with bugs in terms of <laughs> Just... They climb on them and eat them. Okay. <laughs> so here's what elderflower is, okay? It's a species complex of flowering plants in the family Adoxaceae native. Okay, mm. anyway, let me just speak speak to this in layman's terms. So it's cited as being a poisonous plant for mammals and as a weed in certain habitats. Um, and it can <laughs> certainly grow in... It can grow in both wet and dry fertile soils, mostly in sunny locations. You're going to see it a lot of times in hedgerows and scrubland in Britain and Northern Europe, and also widely grown as an ornamental shrub or small tree. So it's it's definitely kind of one of those, like, if you do like a lot of, uh, uh, if you use a lot of trees for lumber, if you're cutting down a bunch of trees for lumber, this might be something that would grow quickly. That would be, you know, one of the quicker growing plants, like right afterwards as like a secondary growth. What we <laughs> see around here, like that would be something similar would be um, like sumac. Like you see like a lot of sumac and like, you know, certain areas uh, that have had logging. So so it said it was poisonous? Uh, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what it's... But is it kind of like a thing like rhubarb that it's poisonous until it's cooked or distilled or something like that? Like isn't there elderflower tea? That I don't, that I don't know. No, that's elderberry tea probably. So it says, yeah, it says it's poisonous to mammals, except for the flowers and ripe berries. All parts of the plants are poisonous to mammals. So elderflower, obviously we're going to be using the flower. So I would assume all of the bark, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the plant otherwise. So it's got something called calcium oxalate in its bark, which also has a medicinal significance. Yeah, I was just looking at elderflower tea is a really medicinal tea. So it Mm. is a tea. Elderflower tea? Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. Healthy poison. Yeah. So it's it can produce sores and numbing on ingestion and can be fatal. Huh. So the calcium oxalate is also found on dumb cane, D-U-M-B-C-A-N-E. It's also found in sorrel and rhubarb, mostly in the okay. leaves. So that's why you're not yep. eating like rhubarb leaves. Uh, cinnamon, turmeric, and uh, a couple other things. I always wonder how they find these poisonous plants and uh, figure out a ways to eat them, like consume <laughs> them. You know, trial and error, my friend. Well, so you but know, I mean, like after someone eats it and they get sick or die, who then says, "Well, that was wrong. Let's try that again." <laughs> so, how many survival shows do you watch, or have you watched? I, I used to watch a lot. Do you know? Remember, like at that point in survival shows where they're like, "Oh man, I couldn't catch that squirrel. I better just start eating plants, you know, to make yeah. myself feel mm-hmm. better." So, like a lot of times during those shows. What they'll do is they'll take the plant that they're considering eating and then like rub a bit of it on their skin. And mm-hmm. then, you know, if it kind of passes the skin test, they'll put a bit of it and like put it in their lip and see if it makes their lip go numb or, you know, in pain or whatever. And yeah. then so if it doesn't, then a lot of people will move on from there. But I mean, through the centuries, yeah, it's going to be trial and error. Interesting. I mean, if there's a lot of people that have lived and died in Europe and uh, probably a lot of people that might have died to the bark. Or the rest of the fruit, or the rest of the plant. Hmm, interesting. My guess. So do you want to like pour a little of this and try it? Oh, I thought we were doing gin. Were we doing gin <laughs> or no? No. I thought. Oh my gosh! I thought we were pouring gin first. That's what I was wondering. Uh, which do you want to do first, then? <laughs> the Saint Germain. What we we're just talking about. <laughs> I was. I was prepared for gin. 
<laughs> Why? Uh, here, let me just quickly, because this, these both of these strings are going to be gin forward. Do we want to try the gins want, or no? You want me to get my gin too? Yeah, get your gin too, man. That's funny. Yeah, we can we can try whatever you want first. Well, let's I try was, the Saint Germain. Let's yeah, let's try, try the Saint Germain. Because we were just talking about it. Whoops. I love the way it smells. Wow, it's sweeter than I thought. It kind of reminds me of like a honeysuckle. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's a liqueur, so you know, there's going to be some sugar added. You mm-hmm. know, depending on the liqueur. I think all liqueur has sugar added to it, doesn't it? I don't know. I don't know. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> all right, are we gonna try this? Yeah, I'm going to. Yeah. Cheers. Clink. Wow. Okay. That's so much sweeter than I thought it would be. So this is this is ridiculous that we haven't looked this up before now. But liqueurs, according to the dictionary, are known as a strong, sweet, alcoholic liquor, usually drunk after a meal. Wow, this is delicious. Mm-hmm. It's it's floral, but in the sense of like I said, like a honeysuckle or yeah. like yep. a sweet smell of a plant instead of like the more root earthy smell. Yep, I could probably drink like just a glass of this on ice. <laughs> Yeah, I could too. Yeah, it's very much like it reminds me of a dessert wine. Yeah, it's it's a little thick. You know what I mean? It's not like mm-hmm. like it's it's definitely got some uh, viscosity to it. I was expecting something very like herbaceous, like basil, or like the the herbalness of a gin. You know, mm-hmm. and well, have it well now. I thought <laughs> not, not, I all, thought, not all. I just are the thought same. the yeah. Um, <laughs> I just thought the taste would be a little bit more subtle and kind of more alcoholic. This is very very. Sweet, kind of like a, when we were drinking the sweet vermouth. Mm-hmm. Is also what it kind of reminds me of. Now the the alcohol, it's not blended too well in this. I think it's mm-hmm. like it's got very three like very distinct sections of of this liqueur. Yeah, like the alcohol is very, um, it's separate. I don't know, like it, it's kind of got its own like heat to it, like or like you know like fiery sort of burning taste to it. Mm-hmm. And then you've got like this sweet section that's also sort of blended in with the herbaceous section. I mean, it's huh. it's good though. I think it's great. It's, it's delicious. Um, so a little bit about Saint Germain. The guy that made it, his name was Robert Cooper. He was pretty young. He was like early thirties, and his family owned like uh, alcohol liquor. I don't know if it was a store or if they actually like made their own stuff. But he had like he really really wanted to make elderflower liqueur, and they, according to him. They were like, no, we're not going to do that. It's a stupid idea. So he left his family business to like pursue making elderflower liqueur. And again, according to him, he said his dad said, I'll hire you back in a year after you fail. (laughs) Wow. So he made it in 2007. And by 2013, it was bought out by Bacardi because it got really popular. And they brought him on as like a brand. uh, What do you call it? Guardian. Yeah. As a brand. (laughs) (laughs) They brought him on as a brand guardian to uh make sure it probably just stayed the same and then he died three years later of what not to be uh sneak- i looked nosy. and there's no information it was never like disclosed you're right um anyways um from what i was seeing i i only saw like saint germain is as the as you said the germain <laughs> elderflower liqueur mm-hmm. like when you look up elderflower liqueur it just like kind of corrects you to saint germain mm. There's probably other ones, but yeah, there are a couple different. One is Belvoir, elderflower cordial. There's not a ton. So, so let's let's talk about let's talk about this being released in 2007. Never would have guessed that. No, I thought it was an older type of thing. Yeah, that's fairly new. That's not even ten. That is ten years old. That's not even twenty years old. I don't know. <laughs> it's almost got like that has like a 19 between like 1910 and like 1940 at best uh, bottle. You know what I mean? I wonder if he had tasted some other older ones because maybe he wanted to make a more popular version. You know where, what I mean? Where was he from? Robert Cooper doesn't sound. Doesn't sound what? This says is imported by someone. It's a product of France. Oh, that's right. It is a product of France. But he passed away in Santa Barbara, California. I don't know anything about. But this I mean, man. the guy that made Hypnotic. Right? Yes, that's, that that was, was also the... a product of France because he was using French fruit. No, Even he, though it well, was, he was using, created uh, in Long Island. He was using brandy. Or sorry, cognac. It had, it had hints of cognac. So I'm, I'm wondering if but he just used it But then the other half of it was things from France. Oh, apple? I mean, you can find apples sort of, you know. That's what it was. <laughs> Dude, it, it was like with French fruits. It's like they put apples in it. But okay, so I'm, I'm glad you brought up uh, hypnotic because I mean, you know, when I, when I look at the back of uh, if someone's, of someone's liquor cabinet <laughs> when I'm sneaking around. 
<laughs> or or um, if I'm looking when I at, hear the kitchen creaking <laughs> at if, night, if I'm at a bar or whatever, and I'm looking back, like you know, both of those are liqueurs, both have them have about the same ABV. They both mm-hmm. even are maybe not equally, but um, I would say even the hypnotic is pretty dynamic. But in terms of like the classiness of presentation, like Saint Germain all day, you know what I mean? Like there's yeah. no doubt, there's no question. Yep. Uh, something that's like a neon electric blue and, and like frosted versus uh, versus that. I mean, it's it's 100 percent marketing plus you know yeah. obviously flavor, but like that's that's the big difference. I thought I, I obviously thought that Saint Germain was a classic, and it's not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean they they the way they bottle is it's very very old timey mm-hmm. like the the almost like art deco label is kind of like scroll scrolling like old text yep. yeah it's interesting though cuz i was talking about the pomegranate liqueur that i bought mm-hmm. and that was a 2006 thing so i wonder if like the 2000s was a big boom in liqueurs i mean <laughs> the 2000s were just a weird time like for economy yeah. for the computers world politics. didn't win we can make liqueurs now it's what the computers Y2K. Oh, the Y2K. All right. So so I've got two other glasses in front of me. So I I think it would be good to just kind of try a little bit of the gin. We've never... We did take a deep dive into gin, but did we only yeah. try one type of gin? So... Did we? The first gin I think we had, I think we used Bombay Sapphire. Mm-hmm. And then we've been using Tanqueray ever since because I have a big bottle of that. Okay. So when we were looking up St. Germain elderflower cocktails... A large majority of them use gin, and they use specific gins based on what was in the recipe mm-hmm. because each gin is kind of different. Some of them have drier gins. Some of them have fruitier gins. Some of them have gins that just have different aspects taste-wise. And I was surprised to see how many like different types of gin there were flavor-wise. Yeah. So I went out. One of them, one of them that we're going to do called for Plymouth Gin, and I couldn't find it, but Andy did. Oh yeah. So Andy has some Plymouth Gin. I have some Hendrix Gin, which is gin made in Scotland, and I guess it's more cucumbery. So which one are you trying, Plymouth? Uh, let's see. You don't remember? <laughs> you just have a little glass <laughs> in front of you. So do you taste a difference in either of those? Uh, yeah, both on the nose and in flavor. Um. So you're doing Plymouth and what? Uh, Plymouth and Bombay Sapphire. So I got to say, they're both, these are both very, um, Plymouth is, is certainly not fruitier. It's, it's definitely more floral and not as like evergreeny and juniper based as like Mm -hmm. a Bombay Sapphire, but they're both very peppery in terms of like flavor and like kind of, um, like peppery and like herbaceous in that Mm -hmm. vegetable, uh, or, or uh, vegetal sort of way, not vegetable (laughs) in a very, (laughs) in a very, um, in a very asparagusy way, carroty. Yeah, it's very carroty. Um, it's interesting that you say that because it does taste. Mine is the same way. It tastes a little bit more herbal, mm-hmm. but the juniper berry is subtle, more yeah. subtle than the Tanqueray that I always drink. It's funny. I was at the gin aisle and I was looking for the Plymouth and I couldn't find it. And the guy's like, "Do you need any help?" And I was like, "Do you know much about gins?" And he's like, "No." <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> he's like, "Don't tell my boss, buddy. I'm just, I'm just told yeah. to ask this." Uh, I think most people in liquor stores know a lot about wine. Yeah. Because you kind of have to. Good amount of the whiskey. And now they're starting to get into the whiskeys. But then, you know, the gin sections and stuff are so small. Like, you're not going to go in there and ask them about sake or... Yeah, the sake section is tiny. Yeah, yeah. Because I was like, oh, I'm looking for a similar one to this one. And he's like, oh. He's like, these are a few of the popular ones. (laughs) Yep. But I'd say these are both good. Yeah. I'd like to get into... Which one do you want to do first? Let's do the... Basilica. Basilica. <laughs> yeah, so the first cocktail we're going to do is called a basilica or basilica, and it's very herbaceous, so I'm a little mm-hmm. excited. It's going to remind me of summer. A little excited, a little pumped. It's going to require me to muddle something in the bottom of a cup, so we'll see how that goes. Oh, man. I Okay, so here's a recommendation, because I used to just shred mojitos, uh, like mm-hmm. the minted mojitos. Less is more, okay? Just, so, a, just enough so for a little bruising. So let's talk a little bit about muddling. Just you're bru- not cutting the leaves, right? No, you're, you're smushing. Just, you're bruising. Yeah, you're yeah. Bru- you're just bruising. Okay. Well, we'll be back. <laughs> All right, we'll be back with some bruised basil and some sweet drinks. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. All right, bye. 
Hey guys, if you're looking to support us, um, there's a bunch of easy ways. One of the easiest ways is just telling your friends about us. Other ways people have helped out is by sending us suggestions on social media, or um, some people have actually sent us stuff in the mail. The newest way you can support is going to our Patreon page that we launched this week. Uh, We both understand that times are tough, especially economically, so non-monetary support, like telling your friends, is just as good. Um, We support that and would never want anyone to give what they can't or shouldn't give. This is just a way for people to give back in a different way. Patreon will let you give what you want, but we set the bar pretty low with just $1 and $2 tiers. Nothing flashy. Both tiers will receive daily access to episodes. We have ideas for future tiers and extra content, but that's not going to come until the world gets back into some sort of norm. Until then, if you choose to support in this way, you can boast to your friends that you heard it before they did. Um, The website is www.patreon.com slash snackdown. It's pretty easy. But we love all the encouragement and support we've received so far. Um, The community that has been growing around us has been great to see. We love talking to you guys. Again, don't give if you don't have the money. Tell a friend, call us, and tell us a funny story, comment on our pictures, whatever. It gives us the same amount of joy. So whatever you want to do is fine. If you just want to keep listening and enjoy that, that's awesome. Uh, Every time we see that people are listening, I mean, that's why we do this. We didn't do it for any other reason than to just have fun, drink, eat, talk, and uh, talk to you guys. So thanks for listening, guys, and uh, back to the episode. Hey, we are back. Here we're back. Yeah. This yes. drink smells like when you're mowing and you accidentally mow over like some herb. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you hit the mint patch or whatever. Mm-hmm. Have you tried it oh, yet? It smells so delicious. No, I haven't. Mm-hmm. It does. That's the basil. It's got to be the basil. Basil's kind of got like a grassy sort of. Mm. Do you have ice in yours or no? No. Okay. It good. said it didn't say to pour over ice, so I didn't. Right. Yeah, same. I think it would be good with ice. I think if you were like drinking yeah. this in the summertime or whatever on your deck uh i think this would be something that would be i think it would go this well like, with some ice this is like drinking a fresh cut lawn in a good way <laughs> yes you're right it is very much so justin no, it's this good. is really good it mm-hmm. kind of reminds me a little bit of the gimlets that we've had in the past and i've had a lot of gimlets lately mm-hmm. but the basil and the elderflower the elderflower makes it a little bit more sweet than a normal gimlet well i, I mean i think the simple syrup did it too I mean, simple syrup Plus mixed lemon. with the elderflower because the elderflower was very sweet. We just tried it. Yeah, it was. It was. I would. I would say this took. This took kind of like the best part of the elderflower liqueur, the Saint Germain, mm-hmm. and just kind of added to it and kind of built on it. It seems. Yeah. I don't know. Like it. I mean, the the basil's there. Don't get me wrong. And it's 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 one of the stronger points of it. But but I think this was like really. I don't know. Really, just kind of captivates it, especially now that we've sort of isolated what the elderflower liqueur tastes like. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like all the pieces of this are kind of accentuating the elderflower liqueur somehow. Mm-hmm. Very because it tastes like a very main ingredient, even though it was very subtle ingredient actually. Mm-hmm. Well, the bitters two too. Two ounces. Yeah, there's bitters in it. So let's talk about what's in it. Yeah. There's right. two ounces of gin. There's half an ounce of lemon juice and a half ounce of simple syrup. Yep. And then you're muddling some basil in there. And then you're only putting a half ounce of elderflower liqueur in there. And then mm-hmm. you have a you have two dashes of bitters, uh, one dash of orange bitters, and one dash of. It wanted us to use Pershad bitters. Yeah, but we use, I used Angostura. I did too. I've got and Ang- I guess Angostura those are similar. Orange. I've got Angostura oh. orange bitters, and then also just plain Angostura. Plain Angostura. Plain Angostura. Yeah. Plain Angostura. <laughs> that sounds like a dinosaur. <laughs> um. So in terms of like the potency of this drink, I was looking in the fun fact section on the page that we used. Mm-hmm. By the way, what was the website that we used? Oh, the, oh it's called thespruceeats.com. Yeah, and I think we've used them before, actually. We have used them before. I like the fact that it's pretty story light. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like I didn't hear about, you know, the person's grandmother, how, yeah, their, how so, their grandmother escaped a war-torn country. It's like, I, I like whenever, that, but I don't whenever need we're, to Yeah, whenever we're doing cocktails... To get to the recipe, you gotta like scroll, 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 scroll. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it gets down to the point. It it even has like a little uh, crowd rating or whatever, like twenty five ratings, you know. And this is all I don't know. It's very mobile friendly too. So good on them. I respect that. I respect a good recipe site, good drink yeah. site. And they they went into a little bit about uh, Saint Germain because mm-hmm. we were looking up Saint Germain recipes. And a major thing other than gin that's paired with Saint Germain is champagne. That's right. Which is interesting. I guess there's a classic uh, Saint Germain cocktail that's just like it's Saint Germain club soda and champagne. Was I supposed to float club soda on this? No, I think that's the next one. Ugh, I gave it away. Oh no! <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, yeah. 
So, this is this is really good. I think I I feel like I remember this being a drier drink, and I'm not sure. I mean, like we did a lot of herbaceous cocktails both on and off the pod last summer, and mm-hmm. some of them were a little on the drier side, and it was good. I just I think I remembered this being drier, yeah. but it's not. It's not. This a dry reminds drink. me a lot of the rosemary gimlet that we did. Mm-hmm. Only this is sweeter. This is sweeter. I think probably and there's not there's not that juniper berry taste. Right. Like, I don't really taste the juniper berry in this at all. And there's no ice in it, right? So yeah. I think I mean I like gimlets with ice, and I think that kind of keeps everything, uh, the the flavors and and smells a little subdued. Mm-hmm. Not really. I mean it's a very powerful drink yeah. in terms of smells, but and to the smell, you would think this is like very basil forward, mm-hmm. but it's not to the taste. No, the basil's kind of subtle. Yeah. Did you get any basil floaties? Uh, I have. I mean, it is, it's like not even anything to write home about. I got like two, but I was wondering, so I, uh, let's see, I picked one out. You can't really see. So I was wondering, so the first thing you do is put the basil, the lemon juice and the simple syrup at the bottom of your shaker and you kind of muddle that. Then you add all the liqueur, liquor stuff in ice, shake it up. Wouldn't the shaking muddle the mint or the basil? Cause I'm sitting there shaking it. I'm like, it's getting more muddled. I'm going to guess. Cause I think that's what. I muddled it, I mean, and like the so shaking much, made it break apart. I mean, there's so much it, other stuff, like, sloshing around. I don't know. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not going to be as impactful as if you just had, like, basil and ice. You know? I mean, mm-hmm. like, you've got a ton more, excuse me, liquid in there. So, I mean, it's I mean, it's just common. It's common in a lot of recipes to add some of the flavors together, but not get a lot of the volume, and that's when you're going to muddle. So Yeah. It, yeah, and I, I, I think I understand why they wanted you to use a different gin. Because I think if the elderberry was in there, too, it might be a little distracting. The juniper berry? If if the juniper berry was stronger, I agree. Um, I mean, I think they would. They, I think they would all taste super good. I, I think there's like a lot, or there's enough going on. I think mm-hmm. if you had like a beef eater or, or something that was just like nothing else going on besides the juniper berry, it would taste a little different. Mm-hmm. And this called for a less dry gin. That's what made it different. Mm-hmm. I guess the Plymouth gin is a little bit less dry. Yeah. I mean, I, it, I think it was, the Hendrix is too. The, I don't think the Hendrix is. It's a Scottish gin, so it's not considered a London a London dry gin, which is like the classic. I think. Gosh, I want to make gin now. Can we make gin? Let's do it. We'll take like a neutral spirit and then like we'll make gin. How's that sound? Mm-hmm. Can that Sounds be a, Can that be a snack down goal? I know where yeah. we can find some juniper berries, my dude. You have juniper berries? I know a person. You got a juniper berry dealer? I know a gal. A gal? Yeah. A juniper berry ass. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I I know where we can find some juniper berries. That's cool. I don't I don't know if there's like a wide variety of juniper berries and kind of what's uh, for food or what's like. Oh, well, that's the poisonous juniper berry. You're not supposed to use that for anything. It's like, well, then stop calling so, it a berry. We've looked up gin before. What else is gin out of? It's got the juniper berries, but that's not the main. Uh, there's orange peel. I know that. I know like alcohol. The flavor, but like, what's the base? Vodka, Pot- <laughs> potatoes. Cool. Uh, predominant what flavor is, is juniper berries. That is production method. So it's, you know, compounding. And then it's popular botanical including uh, uh, flavors include. So juniper is required and everything else mm-hmm. is just an add-on. So you're taking juniper berries. So couldn't you make like a juniper berry wine then if you didn't distill it somehow? Couldn't you ferment juniper berries? No, no, no. Juniper berries aren't the fermentable sugar. Okay, so it's not... That's it's, what I was wondering. I was wondering yeah, yeah, what yeah. the base of the gin was. No, if juniper, berries, juniper berries are the flavoring agent. So it's like yeah. a botanical flavor. So what is the fermentable sugar? I think it can vary. I don't think it, it vary. necessarily it doesn't matter. Needs. Yeah. Uh, so I wonder if that t- just changes like a, flavor. Like if you made a, a corn gin and a wheat gin. A corn gin. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you know? I, I guess. Yeah. I mean, but... Um, I so guess. the guy was, the guy was telling me there's a new place that's barrel aging gin. And he showed me like two of the bottles. And they are a dark whiskey color. I don't know. And if he's I... like, yeah, he's like, you should try these. They, they are pretty interesting. I was like, well. <laughs> You're like, what do they taste like? He's like, well, they sell pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these are really hot on the market right now. You're like, tell me more <laughs> about it. And he's like, oops, almost can't touch he's, it because it's so hot right now. <laughs> he's pulling index cards out of his pocket. And this gin is good for. <laughs> yeah. He's like, and uh, let's do a tasting. And he's like. Tastes like a, and looks at index card, 92 on the liquor enthusiast. <laughs> You're like, that's not a flavor or a rating or a description of it. He's like, hmm? hmm? Excuse me, ma'am, are you looking for a Merlot? I can point you in the right direction. And then he walks away from you. 
<laughs> well, that was a great uh, imagining. This is really good. Yeah, I like it, man. I'm, it I'm really harkens back to the gimlet. It really reminds me of that. Only a sweeter, different herb. Mm, very good. Well, should we make the second one? Yes. And actually, just real quick. So I think I read that this was about 23% alcohol by volume. So it's about the same as a martini per volume. So keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah. Is this hitting you? <laughs> it is a little bit. I mean, it's got two ounces of gin, half an ounce of elderflower. Yeah. So it's got two and a half ounces. Be careful driving home, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> but my gin is 44%. 88 proof. Ooh, and overproof. The, <laughs> okay. the elderflower is 40 proof, so 20%. Mm -hmm. So, man, this uh, is like drinking a garden. It's delicious. What? <laughs> a flower garden, though. Not like a yeah. not a vegetable garden. Yeah, it's like if basil was gr growing next to like honeysuckle and rose. Dude, hell yes. That is yeah. exactly what this is. <laughs> Good call, man. <laughs> and, and then you mowed over all of it. <laughs> yeah, and you accidentally mowed over it, and that's the smell. <laughs> that's perfect. That's a that's a perfect description. Because yeah, it is floral, but it's not like I don't know. It, it's it's such a it's such its own thing, you know. But yeah, definitely honeysuckle and rose. That's that's a perfect description of it, in my opinion. Anyway, oh, I think that's the first good description I've given. That's usually I'm like it's taste it's sweet and sugary. <laughs> yeah, but like if you go back to the whiskey tasting episode, you'll know that I can point out a lot of tastes and not get anything right. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, so here's a Andy is like continues to talk about our first episode one and how he wants to like Dude, it daggon plagues me. Yeah. Okay. Like <laughs> yeah, it Shit comes that up keeps a lot. you up at night. Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> and so we are in this new year going to retest Andy once we're back together. On his we scotch bourbon and gin. <laughs> scotch bourbon and rye. Yeah. Scotch bourbon and gin. I would nail that. Uh, scotch? <laughs> That's gin. <laughs> oh, dang dang it. it. Oh, I got my scotch gin descriptors messed up. <laughs> Juniper like, scotch? <laughs> if you did like a real like, pff, never mind, whatever. Okay. I, I think a smoky gin would be really good, actually. I guarantee my liquor store doesn't have a smoky gin. Yeah. We could do the snack down smoked gin bottle. There's a lot of descriptions. a lot of things, yeah. Oh, yeah, so while I'm thinking of it, the garnish for the drink we just drank, the Basilica, was basil leaves rolled up and then wrapped up and tied with an orange peel. I did not do that. <laughs> Say that again? It said take basil leaves and roll uh -huh. them in a roll. I guess kind of like a joint, kind of. <laughs> and then you take a thin... <laughs> You take a thin orange peel and you wrap those leaves in the orange peel and then and you like drop it in the glass. Single tie. That would be cool. It would look very cool, but hashtag basil harvest. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag the basil joint. <laughs> basil okay. joint. Okay, we're gonna make another cocktail and it's gonna have Saint Germain in it. Now this next cocktail I'm gonna be using Tanqueray gin. <laughs> what, um so what does it call for? Huh? I oh, wasn't this looking, for, I was doing something So this, <laughs> this one calls for uh, Bombay Dry Gin, which is a drier version of Bombay Sapphire. Well, I'll take the Bombay Sapphire out and let it dry out a little bit. <laughs> Hanging on the line. <laughs> Hanging on the line. <laughs> yeah, so I saw that, and so I figured because I have Tanqueray, which is a London Dry, it would work. So, mm -hmm. so I'm going to use that. I'm going to use my Tanqueray. And Andy's going with his Bombay Sapphire after he dries it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to wring it out first. And then I'm going to dry it out. I'm trying to cut down on drying times. Put it in the dryer. Dryer. Set it on permanent press. High heat, 70 <laughs> minutes. We'll see you back in 70 minutes. Justin, can you find enough free songs to hold us through for 70 minutes? Of course. <laughs> Longest episode of Snackdown ever. Just drying gin here. Hello, world. This is Andy. We'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> 70. Bye. <laughs> 70. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> And we're back. back. And we've got another herbaceous St. Germain gin drink. Well, you've got like a big sprig in there. I'm going to ask for a sprig to garnish, my friend. <laughs> I, this is like an infinity pool of a drink because my cup was small. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> well, it's like right to the edge. See mine? Why is that an infinity pool? Because an infinity pool goes right to the edge. Is that true? Mm-hmm. 
Have you ever seen an infinity pool? It's like this is the edge of the pool and this is the water. Does it spill over? I mean, if you like jumped in, yeah. But I think there's grates so that it like kind of like recycles in. I've just probably used infinity you've, pools. You've never, <laughs> you've never seen an infinity pool. I guess not. That must make huh. me a poor. Yeah. Does that make me a poor? Yeah. Damn. You've only swam in finite pools. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, let's talk about what this drink is. Okay. Well, should we take a sip first? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's take a sip yeah, first. Of course. Cheers. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that is refreshing. So this. Let's talk about the process. So first, let's talk. People... The, let's talk about the name first. No, no, no. I think the name will might ruin the process. <laughs> yeah, it's true. The name sounds really like silly, but yeah. it's actually a really delicious drink. Mm-hmm. So the first thing you do is you put your simple syrup in your mixer, and then you muddle. A sprig of mint, which I had to look up what a sprig was, because I was like, is a sprig a leaf or is a sprig a bunch of leaves? A group of leaves. Yeah, so a sprig is like a stem that has multiple leaves. So I put that in there. Then you muddle some ginger in there. It said three slices of ginger, so I didn't know what that meant. (laughs) Yeah. Quantitatively, it's super dumb. Yeah, do you do like a long slice? Is it a short slice? (laughs) So I just... Mine were about like kind of three quarter sized pieces oh, of ginger yeah that's about mine mine were a little bit smaller mine were like dime size ginger Oof. roots yeah very, very weak on the ginger yeah so mine's gonna be a little bit weaker on the ginger so you take those you muddle it into the simple syrup and then you put in your gin you put in your elderflower liqueur and you put your lime juice in uh lime juice lemon juice you put your lemon juice in just kind of like the last one shake that up and then you are f- putting it in a glass with ice and you're floating it with club soda did you have club soda i did Nice. It's good. I bought it just for this. But it's good because I've looked at a lot of cocktails because I've been kind of like going through my fat book of cocktails because <laughs> I got nothing else to do. And I'm like, oh, this one, I have all the ingredients. And then it's like club soda. And I'm like, duh. So I bought a couple extra bottles of club soda just because. So I got a lot more floaties in this one. There's a lot of like... Ginger pieces, floaties? No, pieces of mint. I got no ginger floaties. Oh, I got a couple of ginger floaties. Really? Yeah. So when I'm smell, muddle, on I'm the muddle smell, hard. you're definitely smelling the mint. Mm-hmm. Not as strong as the basil, though, you, which is interesting because I think I think of mint as more aromatic than basil. Uh, I don't it's know. It's hard, to, it's hard to say. They're both extremely yeah. aromatic. Yeah, it's definitely more subtle on the nose than the last one. The last one was like a punch in the face of basil. This is like, you can definitely tell there's mint in it, but it's subtle. Yeah. I feel like basil has the capacity to like fill up a room more easily mm-hmm. than mint. Mint is a thing I always ran over with the lawnmower. Mm -hmm. And it's very evasive if you don't want mint. You mean invasive? Otherwise, you wouldn't have run it over. (laughs) Yeah, like, (laughs) get back here, mint. (laughs) Well, well, it's such a... (laughs) It's so evasive, I can't run it over. I just want to smell it smells. (laughs) This thing's got legs. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's invasive. (laughs) Very good. And it would would always tiptoe over the stone wall into my grass yard, and I would have to mow over it. So um, my brother listened to um, to the Snackdown episode that I wasn't on, the uh, the one with Katie and Marilyn, and he's like, they were just so nice. They like didn't correct you on anything. (laughs) (laughs) It's very very complimenting relationship. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah go back to like episode like one through five and like you and i just are like being just nicer about things <laughs> yeah that's uh we've gotten more uh <laughs> call outy if you will <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with that it's like boy you're looking swell today andy and now it's like <laughs> <Ugh>. wearing <laughs> yeah <laughs> what are you wearing actually it's a shirt sweatshirt that says all pro dad oh it does say that yeah <laughs> <laughs> i found it at uh Callan's like family camp or whatever. So this wasn't another uh, a field find. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, but I, I guess I am finding my clothes in real peculiar places. <laughs> were you finding clothes in strange spots before you were a dad? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so it's not a dad thing. Yeah, I think it kind of also goes in line with like if you're cool with like shopping at Goodwill for clothes. Mm-hmm. Did you, Did you ever shop at Goodwill for clothes? A little bit. I've never found a a, a good find at Goodwill. What? It's always like corduroy pants that always have like that circle spot that's like worn out on the knees, you mm-hmm. know, and then, oh, this is a cool shirt. Oh, there's like mustard. <laughs> I used to shop there very frequently. <laughs> you were like, oh, it's an okay shirt. Oh, mustard. Uh, must find. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> must not put this one down. <laughs> New fave. <laughs> uh, yeah. How often have you gone to a thrift store? 
So I've gone to all the ones around me, and they're all pretty much garbage. How it's many, like ho- how it's many like times? oversized Hawaiian shirts and elastic pants. How, how <laughs> dare you for knocking those two things? What um, I mean, like, how how often do you go? You know, you have to like go pretty consistently. Yeah, not much. Like once a year, I'll like test it out again and be like, no, it's still the same. It's better than me. I haven't been. So you kind of like have to coupon shop, is what you're saying? Like you have to like um, consistently be checking. Yeah. And, yeah. So. Um, I was looking at popular. Okay, so we kind of left off talking a little bit about what what goes into gin. Can you hear the kids? Uh huh. Yep. Loud talkers, <laughs> just like dad. <laughs> um. So I was looking. Like I'm looking at some of the other things that would be found in gin. And so you're looking at, you said lemon and bitter orange peel. Also, orris root. I don't know what that is. Licorice root. Cinnamon. You guys know what cinnamon is? Almond. Savory? I didn't imagine licorice in there, though. That's interesting. I guess savory is a genus of aromatic plants. Did not know that. Anyway, we're moving on. Saffron. You could find gin with saffron in it. That's interesting. And and frankincense, of all freaking things. The stuff that they brought to Jesus. (laughs) With so I, I just wonder. So we did the uh, Frenette Bronca episode, uh-huh. and Frenette Bronca uses seventy percent of the world's saffron. What? Yeah, we talked about that. Seventy percent of the world's saffron goes to Frenette Bronca because a large majority of their herbs, not that we know what they are, there's twenty seven of them, is saffron. But now that you're saying gin is saffron, I, I wonder how much of the world's saffron is just in liquor. <laughs> I think of it as a uh, as an Indian thing. It's a very expensive spice. Yeah, it's the, it's the most expensive spice per weight. Saffron's aroma is often described by connoisseurs as reminiscent of metallic honey with grassy or hay-like notes. Hmm. Very nice. Hey, uh, honey. <laughs> <laughs> the Pennsylvania Dutch cultivated saffron throughout eastern Pennsylvania? That doesn't seem right. American saffron cultivation survives into modern times, mostly in Lancaster County. Or Lancaster County. Where the Amish are? Oh, yeah, buddy. Could you imagine, like, Amish being saffron traders? So they, like, trade in saffron and wicker chairs. Yeah. And, and um, uh, something else. <laughs> <laughs> pastries. How about pastries? Damn it. Never, ha- never had an Amish pastry. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, so there's a place in Montgomery County, Maryland, in Germantown, called, like, the Lancaster County Market. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of Amish markets sell similar things, but it's called a Cooper and all right, so it's pretzel wrapped around Cooper cheese, and then that's you know wrapped and enveloped around like a sausage, and it is without a doubt one of the best things I've ever tasted in my life. It sounds delicious. Now I'm like really hungry. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. But it's, it is honestly, it's like without a doubt like one of the best things you can ever have. So like, here's the so we're <laughs> you know we don't talk about it much, but we're in quarantine. We're in our houses. Mm-hmm. I think the hardest thing for me is when I hear something like that, I get a hankering to like go buy something. And I used to always go on Wegmans runs. Yeah. Like, you, like every I other mean, night, like, I, I get like, like something can't. in my mind. I'm like, oh, I want a snack on that. And I just drive out and get it. And now I'm like, oh, I can't. <laughs> like, I don't know the next time I'm going to have anything from Auntie Anne's at the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. at the mall, you know? Like, I could go to Cinnabon right now. You couldn't. The mall's closed. That's the thing. Like, I used to, I'm a, I'm a person that gets something in my mind, and then I have to have that thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about, like, Amazon? Well, I, I don't have you- Prime, so the shipping is just a pain when you're buying, like, a bag of chips. Man, I got you. Just Venmo, Venmo me some money. <laughs> uh, so this drink is quite delicious, and the club soda kind of... Mellows it out a little bit. I think the last one had a lot more stronger sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. And this one's not as sweet. And I think that is just by topping it off with a little bit of club soda. It kind of waters it down a little bit. But not in a watery way because of the carbonation. It doesn't taste watered down. But This makes me want to make ginger cocktails like way more often. See, I don't taste the ginger at all in mine. And that could be because mine were (laughs) dime-sized. Go for the quarter next time. I did well, like my quarter... ginger root wasn't like the the width of it wasn't quarter size. Are we gonna are we gonna exchange ginger root sizes? Should we measure our gingers? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not doing that. <laughs> but actually, so the ginger is very prominent on mine. It almost makes me want to do like as dumb as it sounds, like a Moscow Mule from scratch, and like do like I don't know if club soda would kind of jive with that, but like do yeah. like a club soda, simple syrup, ginger root, and then do um, uh, then do vodka. Like this makes me want to do fresh ginger drinks. Yeah. We should do a ginger drinks episode. <laughs> You're like, yeah, it totally makes me want to, even though I can't taste the ginger at all. 
<laughs> what makes me want to want to taste the ginger? I really did. <laughs> I'm really uh, striving for it. Because I was like, I was like muddling hard to try to get the ginger in there. <laughs> so hard. So when I went in to make this mint drink, so what is? We didn't even say the name of this drink. So it's called Eye Candy. Hubba hubba. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like a real like jock. Which doesn't really make sense to me at all. Uh, color wise, it looks exactly the same as the last one, only a little <laughs> yeah. bit lighter. Yeah. Um, and then the garnish is less fantastic than the last one. It's just uh, mint leaf. Uh, but I, uh, when I went to make this drink, I had made bacon earlier, and there was still like my plate of bacon cooling near the oven. So I uh, decided to have a piece of bacon in between drinks. I figured that would be a palate cleanser. <laughs> get you closer to your uh, smoked gin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Are there any bacon cocktails? Uh, a Bloody Mary, I'm sure. Yeah. Let's not do that. Come on. <laughs> That's really Remember just like... I had those bacon mints? <laughs> That's a callback to episode two. Uh, yeah. Let's just... that'll be on the Patreon. <laughs> so if you've if you've been here since the beginning, listeners, we uh, appreciate it. I've listened to the old episodes and the audio quality is <laughs> abysmal. <laughs> it's very bad. So uh, if you've been with us since the beginning, we thank you. And if you go back, just expect a lot of reverb. <laughs> I always tell people, I'm like, yeah, start at like episode seven or ten. <laughs> so eight. No, episode seven. Episode seven. So episode seven, we did Soylent, which is mm. pretty fun. It was a good episode. That was a that serious episode. That was the first episode. episode where we started uh, using two mics. And then the episode eight was with Chris from Trench. So shout out to Chris. Who? Chris Riley from Trench. <laughs> <laughs> Love Chris. Um, and I think that one is where our audio quality really picked up. So if you are wondering where to go start, I would start around seven or eight. There's some good funny quality moments in episodes one through six, especially on our origin story where we eat fondue and talk about dating. Was that within? That was not within episode one through six, was it? Oh my it was, gosh, it yes, was it episode was. six. <laughs> that's and that's. Oh my gosh, that was a long time ago. It was. We were sweating bullets because it was summertime and we were making fondue. <laughs> it's 90 degrees. We were eating hot cheese. Looking at our deared ones. I don't know what the saying is for that. <laughs> There's nothing like eating hot cheese in a hot room. Yeah. With couple someone hot, you care about. A <laughs> couple of hot guys. <laughs> <laughs> there was an old episode where we had to take a break to take off a layer. <laughs> So Gosh, summer is coming up, so your you're you're up for some quality content again when we hit the summer months. <laughs> we can't do episodes at your place. We just can't. I can't do it, man. So um, which uh, so which drink did you like better? It's a tough question. I, I would make either of them. They require different ingredients on hand. Obviously, yeah. basil is a big one. Mm-hmm. I think the biggest limiting factor is going to be the second drink with ginger on hand. Not everyone's going to have ginger on hand regularly. Although it keeps pretty well. So uh, maybe just buy ginger at some point, if you're, especially if you're doing like Asian food or so. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, overbuy a little bit. And if you've got ginger on hand, think of the eye candy cocktail. Or just message yeah. us if you can't remember it. We will mm-hmm. find that for you. So here's my take. I like the flavor of basil better than mint. Okay. Mint ties better to more to... I, like, I, I eat mint more in sweet things. So there's like always like mint chocolates and mint candies and mint... Have you had the new Andy's basil chocolate? <laughs> no. Not so a I thing. think I think <laughs> I think the first drink, I liked the basil notes better than the mint notes. I'm not saying I di- dislike the mint. I just think I like I like the basil herb better than the mint herb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I, th- I liked the the second drink because it wasn't as sweet. So I think if you added a little club soda to the first drink, I think it would have been fantastic. I think the first drink was great. And I liked the first drink, I think, better. Yeah, I think there could have been some balancing in both of the drinks. Mm -hmm. I'd say if you haven't... So if you haven't gotten into herbaceous cocktails, I'd say the Basilica is a big boom. Like, come on in. You know, like the water's fine. Like, it's a really good drink to start with because it's sweet. Very, very good. It's a very good cocktail. And... I don't know. You know, I feel like you're going to pay something like, you know, $10, $12 at a bar for something like that. And you can make it very inexpensively and very fresh and and very easily. I mean, like, you know, we make cocktails when our kids are asleep. You know, like that's that's what we do. And it's I mean, our kids 
have hypersonic hearing, which is terrible, but, but like we can make it like very quietly, good quantity or, or, or no good quality, <laughs> quietly, quality, minimal quantity. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, since we've been doing this, I never had thought about adding like herbs to cocktails mm-hmm. and it just adds so much extra to a cocktail because you can go out and buy a bunch of liqueurs and yeah, but yeah. And, they're, and, and they just taste a little bit fake. You know, they're very like syrupy and sweet, but yeah. something about adding like a real leaf and muddling it into your cocktail mm-hmm. is it, just it, absolutely delicious. It just adds like, it, as, as like dumb and cliche as this might sound, it like adds like new life to a drink. You know, mm-hmm. it like adds like fresh freshness to a drink. So yeah, it's um, the difference between like biting into an apple and eating an apple jelly bean. I feel mm-hmm. like yeah, you know? completely. Like there's a completely. huge difference, and like just throwing something real, throwing actual leaves into your mixer is just a good feeling. <laughs> I I know a lot of the people that we've interacted with um, on socials and and what have you. A, a lot of people are like gardeners, right? Like we have like we have people that surpass our culinary gardening and baking abilities by so much it's it's crazy i mean like this is like a consumer podcast this is not a professional baking cooking barista podcast right so yeah. but um i would say to recommend for the for everyone else the joes and janes of the Snackdown group get an herb garden mm-hmm. if for nothing else just adding like a little bit to your meals and a lot of it to your drinks and yeah. they're not very tough to keep and if you live in the Northeast, like Syracuse area, they're not going to keep through winter. But whatever, just buy new every year. Who cares? Yeah. That's it. That's my recommendation. You really want to jazz up and make the best out of your summer? Start an herb garden. And if you're having a cocktail party of sorts, if you throw real herbs in your drinks, you're going to impress those guests. Real herbs equal real parties. So well, what was your favorite, Andy? You didn't say. I don't. I, I can't say. Yeah, they're 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 different I, enough and both very very good. I would say the eye candy is going to be more uncommon in my household. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, I mean, obviously. Uh, never mind. I'm digging out. Let me just try to dig out of that. The ginger is going to be more uncommon in my household. Yeah. So uh, I think it's going to be. Uh, I think eye candy will be great. You know, like when when I can get ginger on my hands. But um, mm-hmm. the basilica. We've had it before. We had it last summer. I didn't know if you knew that, but we have tried it before. Oh, really? I didn't yeah, because we we did have it. We did have uh, the Saint Germain Saint Germain or whatever you want to call it. Saint Germain. Um, Saint Germain. Oh, nice. <laughs> that no, that was awful. <laughs> so you've had that before. Saint Germain. Yeah. Can we look up an official? It's probably Saint German. <laughs> yeah. Let's go with that. <laughs> Saint Germain, French. Saint Germain, French. Saint Germain, French. Saint Germain, Saint Germain, French. Weird. They just keep saying French at the end. Yeah, <laughs> but is that Saint Germain French <laughs> translated to French? <laughs> yeah, it's in French. Uh, actually, okay. So here's like pop sugar food. And she's here to show us how to make the Saint Germain cocktail. Hi, oh, Hi. this. Hi. Oh, this Karen says Saint, Saint Germain. Germain. Has really become sort of the cocktail of the summer. Absolutely. I mean, I drink Saint Germain anytime. This, this person I'm is uh, so these two people. people it's really become are, the cocktail of the summer. The summer. You can't <laughs> spell COVID without Saint Germain French. <laughs> <laughs> like, why'd you add French at the end of that? And like, uh, just whatever. Saint Germain French. That's how you say it. <laughs> yeah. The F R E N C H is silent. <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour, French. <laughs> Hello, English. <laughs> <laughs> Very beautiful. Um, well, thanks for joining us today. I think it was. Um, well, you say thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for joining us. And uh, <laughs> if you look up any Saint Germain drink, um, the ones that we Saint looked Germain up French. was. If you look up any Saint Germain French drinks. <laughs> Most of them will be with gin. Some of them will be other things, obviously. And a lot of them will be with specific gins. But just kind of look up why. Because you could probably use any gin, I'm sure. You could, Um, yeah, you could. I I don't think you'd you'd have like a gin, unless it was like maybe that smoked gin, that you'd be like, whoa, get this gin out of this drink. You know what I mean? I I think you're like looking for these these delicate pairings, but I don't think it's going to make or break that drink. Yeah, unless it's like very specific. So... Ryan, who suggested this, 
made a cocktail using Empress Gin, which mm-hmm. it's a blue and it uses pea blossom is like one of the main flavors in it. Okay. And I think that's like the point of that drink. So if you're making a cocktail like specifically for the gin. Wouldn't something um, pea blossom be yellow? <laughs> you're just focusing on the pea part. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> anyway, you want to do um, you want to do the uh, reel, like yeah, the yeah, rollout? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks for listening today. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and you can find this episode and others like it on iTunes, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and a bunch of other places. And you can go to our website at www.snackdownpod.com, and you can go to our Patreon page at www.patreon.com/snackdown. And you can call us and leave us a message at 315-313-5456. And you can give us suggestions. You can tell us a weird story or do whatever you want. And uh, we'll probably end up playing it on the pod if it makes us chuckle or not. I don't know. (laughs) If it's a belly laugh, it's a (laughs) (laughs) no-go. But yeah, thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for your support. Thanks for telling your friends. Uh, we're glad that people listen every week and when we see you commenting and stuff like that, it's, it's nice. So thanks. Justin cries a little bit every time. (laughs) Every time you leave a comment, a Justin gets his wings. (laughs) Weird, but okay. Weird, but true. Um, anyway, but yeah, thanks for listening. We appreciate it. And, uh, we'll see you next week and take care of yourselves and each other. other. (laughs) And next week's a food episode, and we got a good uh, we got a good one in the bank. So. It's gonna be applied food, so yeah. get ready for that. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks, and uh, make some herbaceous cocktails. Smooches. Bye. <laughs> All right. Bye. <laughs>